idle, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from God of his salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? I will lift my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. The Lord is near to all those that call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteousness, my righteous hand. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For we know that if your earthly house, for we know that if your earthly house, this tent is destroyed, have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. May you add a blessing to the reading and hearing of God's word. You may be seated. We are here to celebrate a soldier. We're here to celebrate the life of Mother Elizabeth Best Knox. She was a soldier. She requested that we give her a good home going. So this is not a sad occasion. Though we will miss her, yes. But we're to celebrate the life. Her life was a testament to all of us. At some point in time, I know she ministered to you in some kind of way. Whether it's directly or through her children, she ministered to all of us. Elizabeth Knox, born September the 1st, 1919, departed January 17th, 2024. Saturday, January 27th, 2024 at 11 a.m., this is 1815 Rose Street, Texarkana, Arkansas, 71854. Yours truly, Pastor Joyce Rockwell Bennett. And the senior pastor is Pastor Clyde L. White. He will be your eulogist. So now we have the processional that said, I will lift up, I will lift my hand in total praise. Then we have a selection by Word of Life Choir. We have a scripture, the Old Testament, Pamela Walker. The New Testament, Pastor James Anderson. We govern ourselves accordingly.
will serve me till I die. And I'm fighting, yes I am. Fighting for the Lord. On this Christian journey, I have heartaches and pain. Sunshine and rain, but I'm fighting. Yes, I am. Fighting for the Lord. On this Christian journey, I have heartaches and pain. Yeah. Sunshine and rain, but I'm fighting. Fighting for the Lord. Yeah. Listen, if I hold down, yeah. hold down, hold down, yeah. hold down, you say, hold down. Hold down. Yeah. Hold down. If I hold, hold down. down, if I hold, hold down.
the Lord forever. Have a blessing to the reading of the word. Praise God. Amen. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. I'm on the battlefield too. Amen. I'm fighting for the Lord. Amen. 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 There is a word in First Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. And the uh, beginning at the 13th verse and ending at the 18th verse, and special emphasis on that 14th verse. Amen? Amen. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. That, that verse I was telling you about. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with them. Amen? Amen. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a, with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the death in, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then, we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and the doers of his word. Praise the Lord, saints. As we said, this is a celebration of the life of Mother Elizabeth Knox. She was a soldier. She was a soldier. She always had a word in her belly. Even if it was short or long, she had that word in her belly. So we're here to celebrate the life, hallelujah, the footprints that she had on this earth. She left us something. Well, Sister Peggy, I have you know that she told me I was one of her daughters, so. So I'm, I was grateful uh, to be acquainted with Mother Knox. She was a mother to a lot of us. Though she just gave birth to you all, but she mothered a lot of us. She had that nurturing spirit, and we are ever grateful. And thank you all for sharing your mom with all of us. We appreciate that. We thank the Lord. So next we have a prayer by Sister Gail McIntyre. After that, we have resolutions by Minister Rosemary Love. And after that, we'll have a selection by John, Brother John Nolan. So govern yourselves accordingly. Amen, amen, amen again. Now, I have prayed over my auntie while she was sick. I prayed over her in the hospital at home. I've just prayed over her. But this is the first and last prayer that I will pray over my auntie. And I can remember praying in the hospital. Y'all give me a minute. And she was overjoyed. I remember my cousin, Minister Rowena, calling me. She said, Pastor Gail, what did she do? I said, you were there, I prayed. She said, yeah, but you stirred up mama. She's in the hospital and she's hollering. 
and the people are running in the room saying, what's wrong? What's wrong with her? She said, ain't nothing wrong with her. She's just praising God. Amen. So she was a praiser. She loved to sing. She loved the Lord. She loved her family. And she always had something to say. So before I pray, I have to say something to the family. She says, I'm fine. Don't worry about her. She's fine. She says, let me go. This is what she would say to the Lord. Lord, I'm ready. Let me go. She said, everything is going to be all right. Family, it's going to be all right. She has laid the foundation for all of us. And what we do with it is important. And then she said, <laughs> that because she has made it, she has crossed over. So we thank God for the legacy that she left us. It was not an easy thing. 104 years. Family, we have longevity in our family. Remember that. Mama Lucy, her mother, 102 years. She came back with 104. I don't know who's out here that's going to make 100. You may make 106. I don't know. But it's in the family. It may not be but just 100. But hold on. Let us bow our heads. Father God, oh, hallelujah. God, I thank you for the celebration of life one today, Lord. I thank you, Father God, that you reign in this house, Father God. I thank you, Lord, that you, God, have covered us by your blood, Heavenly Father God. And, Lord, if we don't have it right, Father God, this is the time to get it right. And I know that that's her prayer for our family, is to get it right for those who do not have it right. Get it right is what I'm hearing in my spirit. Let God reign in our lives, Heavenly Father. Lord, we thank you, God, and we praise your holy name, Father God. For God, there is none like you, Heavenly Father God. I thank you, Lord, for giving us that opportunity, Father God, to be able to know Honey Lesson with Mother Knox, Father God. Best that's my father called her and her sisters and brothers, Father God. Thank you for giving us that opportunity, God, to have her in our life, Father God. Lord, and I pray, God, because some of us is not going to be easy, Father God. But, God, I thank you, Lord, just knowing, God, that all things work together for good for those who are in Christ Jesus. So, God, we thank you for that, dear Jesus. We thank you, Father God, that we are on the battlefield, Father God, to serve you, Father God, to worship you, Father God. Lord, we thank you for that, dear Jesus. And, God, hallelujah, God, we thank you, God, no greater love, God that you have for us, dear Jesus. You loved us, God, even before, God, we were born, Father God. So whatever's not right, Father God, we pray, God, that it will be right in the mighty name of Jesus. And we give you all praise, all glory, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen again. Hallelujah. She affected my life in a personal way. 
last year when I lost my 14-year-old granddaughter. The enemy wanted me to give up on God. But when I would come in church on Sunday morning, and I would look right there, and I would see Mother Knox sitting there, she would have a smile on her face. And when I would walk by, and she would grab my hand, and she would say, me and Jesus, we got our own thing going. <laughs> well, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. We never know whose life we are affecting. She affected so many lives. And so we praise God this morning. Amen. Resolutions. Preston Church of God. Resolution of respect for Sister Elizabeth Knox. No matter what your trials are, or how big your mountain seems, the Lord is there to see you through. He'll go to all extremes. So if your cross seems hard to bear and you know not what to do, the one who loves you most of all will be there to see you through. We, the members of Prescott Church of God, want the family to know that our hearts are with you as we gather to be at a Christian goodbye to Sister Elizabeth Knox, a willing worker for Christ. Whereas Sister Elizabeth Knox professed a hope in Christ at an early age and was an active and regular supporter of church. Whereas Sister Elizabeth Knox loved the Lord, a very independent person who would perform any task and instilled in her family to follow her example. She loved her family with a gentle, yet stern combination which only she possessed. Whereas not only is this a loss of a devoted person, but also a confidant, servant of the Lord, and closest of friend, a person who was always available to provide strong support. Whereas the passing of our beloved sister, Elizabeth Knox, is the will of God, and there is a human tie that has been broken, which bleeds the heart in agony and pain. We are encouraged and consoled in the words of Jesus that a person of official mourning would be observed to acknowledge the passing of our precious sister, Elizabeth Knox. To the family, we know your loss is deep and your sorrow is great, but we want you to know that we share in your sorrow. But more importantly, we recognize that this loss is heaven's gain. When it is all over, we would like you to remember in case there's a time when you just need some cheer, in case there's a problem you would like us to hear, in case there's favor you would like us to do, we're here if you need us to help see you through. Humbly submitted on the 27th day of January, 2024, the officers and members of the Prescott Church of God. A copy of the church resolution will be given to the family and another copy will, will be recorded in the church archives. Ricky Gamble, pastor, Ingrid Manigo, secretary, Elaine Williams, treasurer. Resolution of respect in memory of Mother Elizabeth Knox. Again, death has carried away a faithful and great woman of God. Our society bows in humble submission to the will of our Heavenly Father. We thank God for having known a woman like her who led an exemplary life. The praise and thanksgiving of this holy woman, her sweet, soft voice, and her beautiful smile will be missed. She was one who loved the Lord, her family, and had a special love for all people. She was a pioneer, great warrior, and great organizer. Can't you tell by this congregation today? Praise the Lord. 
Thank God that she was a flower in full bloom, ready to be picked by her maker. Although weary with toil and with faith, after many years with life's struggle, she has now fallen asleep. Be it resolved, the New Beginnings Church extends our heartfelt sympathy to all family, Word of Life ministries, and all others who are impacted by her life. Resolve further that we should all strive to emulate her example of unselfish service and love as a brave and loyal soldier of Jesus Christ, able to say, for I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love is appearing. Second Timothy 4, verses 6 and 8. New Beginnings Church, Bishop C. Dale White, Jr. Pastor, 3701 Main Street, Texarkana, Texas. Bishop C. Dale White, Jr. Pastor, Carrie White, Administrative Secretary. Word of Life Ministries Incorporated Resolution. How sweet it is to rest after a long and weary spent life. To rest in the arms of Jesus from the trials of this life. To the Knox family, at this time, we would recommend that you lean on the arms of Jesus, knowing that he can and will bring you through. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Psalm 30, verse 5. The Word of Life Church family offer our sympathy to the family and our prayers. Humbly submitted, Pastor Claudia White and church family. Church Secretary, Sister Jacqueline Jones, Pastor Claudia White, Pastor. God bless you. I hold in my hand several cards and uh, several resolutions. God bless I 
the Lord has in store for you. Praise the Lord. Thank you for that beautiful selection. So next up, we have words of encouragement by Brother Yoral Portlock. Yo, Yo, Port Portlock is near. It's coming. It's a loss of a love, the loss of a life of a loved one. But I now know the most tragic thing that could happen to anyone is that you live this life and you don't accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. After my parents died, I occasionally would come down to Texas County. And I would visit Mr. and Mrs. Knox. And all they talked about was the goodness of the Lord. And I now know that the light from the lighthouse shine on Mr. and Mrs. Knox like a beacon of light that glow in the midnight hour. Uh, just a few days ago, Miss Knox Miss Knox's old building had a leak in it, and she's gone to a place where another building where a man hand where where a building where ma, uh, another building where the hand. All right. So you know, when I think about Miss Knox, I think about a man named Mr. Stafford. His name was uh, Horatio Stafford. He wrote only one song, and that song was one of the most inspiring songs ever written. He had, he was a lawyer. He had four girls and one boy. And tragically, all his children died. And he got a pen and a paper, and he wrote, Peace Like a River attending my way. It's like sea billow rolls. Whatever my lot I will, uh, will tell me, whatever my lot thou hast told me, thou hast told me, oh Lord, you know I'm getting old now. Yeah. Well, they wrote, he wrote that song, and it's, uh, uh, it's well with my soul. Everybody got to know that uh, Miss Elizabeth, she no longer have to bury her children. She no longer have to worry, have to live in pain. So it got to be well with my soul. So you family needs to be encouraged. Thank you. Praise 
Praise the Lord. Yes, family, you be encouraged because as Sister Gail said, she left a legacy here. Y'all, she's already laid it for you. All you got to do is pick it up. It's not anything that you got to sit and establish. She established it for you. So we just keep, our, she would say, hold on to God's unchanging hands. That's what she would tell us. And she said, when you ask God, she said, you don't have to beg him. So all you do is ask. And she would tell me, she said, keep on running for Jesus. Don't stop. She always had a word in her belly. So now we're up to tribute from family and friends. And they asked two minutes, please. So we're at that point. Come, while they're, they're coming, coming, come on, you come, come on up. up. If, if you, you will, will be expedient. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I know this is a celebration. Sister Knox, the one that we know, old church of God. Oh, how many more churches, but we talking about, we know that we know. Uh, first, giving honor to God, to Pastor White, and all the clergy, and all this family. I am Apostle Dr. Ellen Holmes, representing the Arkansas Southwest Assembly of the Church of God, where she would come for the old camp meeting. She was gonna. Ha she had a family member to bring her, but then we we soldiers and we, we are soldiers. But we're talking about a general, okay? We're not talking about. She she's not. She was not just a soldier. She taught us how to be soldiers. That's a general, okay? And and we falling in behind her. One minute, all right, then. But I just want to say thank you, family. Thank you for bringing her to camp meetings, and she would she would just ease up to us with a kiss, and then she would have a word. She had to tell us, but she passed it on, and we say thank you, and we represent the Arkansas Southwest Assembly of the Church of God. I just want to say, too, Yes, we do represent the Southwest Assembly, and we're really working hard to keep the assembly going because I remember when we used to go to a, a brush harbor. It was a building and had sand in the bottom and no, no, no walls, and they had church. Sister Knox and all of us, and I was a little bitty girl, and now my mama is 92 years old, Catherine Thomas, and the late Leslie Thomas, <laughs> Reverend Leslie Thomas. And so my twin sister is back there, and my mom got triplets, and, and so she had nine children. But I remember growing up with Sister Knox, and she didn't play. And it used to be if you got in trouble, they could whoop you. They could say whatever they were going to say, and your mama was going to get you later for messing up. I remember all that, but now we're seniors. And so I just want to say I thank God for Sister Knox and her family and the legacy that she left behind. Right quick, um, we we do this thing called uh, Best Fellowship. It was what last? It was last year, last Christmas or last Christmas, and we had to put um, our names in the hat, and everybody pulled the name. I pulled Mother Knox's name. A week before that, my landlord <laughs> gave us. Um, Two gift cards for twenty five dollars. So I had it for a whole week. I didn't even know about the hat. But then when I got her name, I get that show you how God was. I gave her that twenty five uh, dollar gift card, and she she put a nice smile on her face and said thank you. <laughs> so that's gonna be the one memory that I'm always gonna have about Mother Knox.
giving honor to God, to the pastors and ministers. Um, I am one of the triplets that my sister just got through talking about. But I didn't c I, I'm a part of that assembly also, but I came to talk about Sister Knox just as a personal family friend. And um, she had a voice that when she spoke or when she praised God, you stopped and you paid attention. I've known her since I was able to know people. And uh, that's one thing that has always stuck with me. And she has always been, uh, everything you all have said about guiding us, uh, she does what, the, she did what the Bible said. Guide these uh, young ladies and train them the way they're supposed to be. And if you didn't act right, that loud voice came in your direction. But the uh, one lasting memory that I have is we were taking those shots for the COVID. And we were at St. Michael's. And she and we had brought my mom, who is 92, and I think um, at the time my mom might have been 90, and Sister Knox might have been 102, something like that. And they were up in there. Sister Knox said, I done had to take care of my three girls. They all had the COVID. And <laughs> she done had to feed them, make soup. And, uh, but they had her in a wheelchair, and my, my mom were in the wheelchair, and my brother and I just sitting there listening. Yeah, she was telling us how she done had to take her, all three of y'all. And, uh, and we were laughing about that. And then she said, well, and I decided I'd better come on and get this shot. And my mom said, yeah, my children made me come on and get it too. But then, after the pleasantries, they got to talking about the Lord. They brought that waiting area down. There was a white lady in there. That lady got happy from their conversation. She said, what do y'all go to church? What do y'all worship? Because I want some of what y'all got. And we started trying to tell her, but that's what kind of lady Sister Knox is. We haven't told my mama about this because out of all the people, and we didn't see each other all the time, but my mama remembers Sister Knox. And, and so we haven't told her because um, uh, she'll cry and cry. And, and, uh, and we're going to ease it when, we, when I get home. We'll show her the program, but ease it into it because she's going to be so sad. And she remembers people, you know, the people of old that she worshiped with. And Sister Knox was one of those main people. And I tell you what, uh, all my life, God has put women of faith, strong women of faith in my life. And Sister Knox was one of those women. And I thank God for her life. Giving honor to God and to each and every one of you who are here today, to the family. Um, I just want to, um, we want to give our condolence to the family. Um, I am Wendy Stewart, and uh, my husband is Reverend Johnny Stewart, and he used to pastor over in the Mount Edition and for a year, about 25 years. And uh, she would come to church, and she didn't have a whole lot to say, and she didn't make a whole lot of noise. But one thing about Miss Knox, she really uh, was an encourager of the young women. And uh, I, when I came to Texarkana, I got married to the pastor, and she was there. And she encouraged me a whole lot. And, uh, she, and with the young people, I would watch her, how she would she would take, they would come to her and she would hug them up. And it's not just a hug, she would just hug you re up real good and talk to you. So we appreciate her years with us and uh, our prayers are with the family. Amen. second oldest grandchild and I had the pleasure of living with my grandmother and coming up she instilled a lot of things in me she taught us be kind to people yeah. treat people how you want to be treated 
She taught us a lot of things. She did. I know some people call me bougie. It was because of my grandma. I'm going to blame it on her. <laughs> Growing up, I never knew what great value was. She bought everything brand name. So you was raised up on imperial sugar, gold medal flour. <laughs> exactly. So when we went to the store, you know, people around me, I was like, I don't want to buy no great value. We grew up on real stuff. <laughs> and I learned as far as like her buying groceries. I, I now understand that to stock stuff, she had a closet in her bathroom. It was full of toothpaste and soap. We never ran out of toothpaste and soap. <laughs> never. She, uh, I blame her like she cooked everything from scratch. Everything from scratch. So don't blame me if I don't eat your cookie. My grandma was a great cook. I know mama used to get mad at us when she would take us to different people's houses and we didn't eat their food. So we eat by sight. If it don't look good, we're not going to eat it. Amen. If it passed the sight test, we'll smell it. If it don't smell good, we're not going to eat it. <laughs> so I blame that on my grandma. I blame that on her. Uh, I'm, I'm going to sit down. The last memory I have of my grandma is when she was in the hospital. I used to do shifts with her and Aunt, my mama and Aunt Peggy watching her. And physical therapy came in the room. And uh, they were like asking her different questions or whatever. And so I was like, y'all got to like insert yourself or else grandma going to keep talking and you ain't never going to get what you need done. So I went to, I took a phone call and I'm, you know, talking. And after I got off the phone, I said, well, did you, you know, get whatever you needed? And she was like, oh, she just basically told me I was going to hell. I was <laughs> like, I'm like, Grandma. But that was her way of talking about the Lord. She did. And she was an encourager. Her favorite scripture was Philippians 4 and 13. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And so if you don't learn anything today about my grandmother, learn that she encouraged for you to keep going. Yeah, that's my big sister. <laughs> and she always encouraged me. Y'all just don't know. I'm considered the black sheep of the family. My grandma has always worried about me. I've been in trouble since probably I was born. I always had to go find the switch. You hear me? But one thing I know, and she always used to tell me, before I get in trouble in Africa, you straighten your face up. I can hear her say that right now. You straighten your face up. Um, man, my grandma, uh, I remember when she was 76 years old, and we were walking down to St. James uh, Church over in, the, in the Arkansas side. And uh, we was coming back, me and Mario, and she raced us. She said, y'all want to race? She had her little tennis shoes on. They were bent to the side, you know, whatnot. But I remember she was, you know, I was pretty fast, and I, you know what I'm saying? But I, she was giving me a run for my money, you know, at 76 years old, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, that taught me a lot about how I looked at older people, you know what I'm saying? I can remember when uh, it was time for me to get out of prison, and uh, I didn't have no place to go. They wouldn't let me parole back with my mom. So my grandparents was the only option I had to come back to Texarkana. And it was like February, and they, I had like been less than 30 days to get out. And uh, um, they went to my grandpa, my grandma, and asked him, would uh, they let me come and stay with them? And my grandpa said, no. <laughs> you know, I was hurt. I, I, I mean, I was hurt. Y'all don't know I was hurt. You know what I'm saying? When he said no, because I had to stay longer. They wouldn't let me out. Now, they have no place to go. They weren't going to let me come back to Texas County. Thank God my dad said I could come live with him. But man, I was hurt, and I didn't, I didn't, I didn't like my grandpa for a long time. I couldn't understand why he said that. But it came to me one day. God blessed me and said that they're too old to be messing with you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because at, at that particular time, I, you know, at that particular time, I was a Tasmanian devil. I was into everything, and you couldn't tell me nothing. That's just, that's just how I was. Anybody know me? Whether we ran to school, or out of school, they knew 
You could tell me nothing. And I wasn't going to listen. But I'm finally starting to catch on a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? And I want to say this here. My grandma always taught me to just pay my tithes whenever I can. She didn't have much, but she would reach in her little pocketbook and give us a quarter or 50 cent. Whatever she had, she would give to us to put in the church. Way down in Prescott. I'm like, where are you going, Grandma? You know? But I understood, you know, what that means. You know, she was trusting the Lord to turn that little into a lot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I want to I wanna stand here today and encourage y'all, man. Um, I read the scripture last night um, over in Corinthians that talk about um, love. And it said that if you can do miracles and save everybody from everything, you were most anointed, most talented, and all this. I'm paraphrasing. But it said you can have all that and don't have love. You're just a tinkling symbol. You know what I'm saying? I, I, see, I see that today in so many situations and, and, and people who say they serve God, they, they're the most talented, they're the most this and that, but they don't have love. They done, they done got away from the basics. You know what I'm saying? They, and I, I just want to say, man, whatever you do, God is love. If you don't have that, you ain't got nothing. I don't care who you are, where you at, because ain't none of that going to matter when you get to heaven. He's not going to pick you out for being the best singer, the most anointed, this or that. He's not going to pick you out. You're going to be just like everybody else. So that None of that going to save you one day. I just want to encourage y'all, man, to just look high and know that God looked down low. You know what I'm saying? Here you go. My name is Marcia Nixon Guillory. Um, my father was Randolph and is Randolph Nixon Sr. And my Aunt Elizabeth, of course, my sister and some of you more would argue with me, but I often say I'm her favorite niece. <laughs> I love my aunt. I kept in contact, even though I don't live here. I kept in contact. When I would see a hat that was, that because she loves hats, and that was one thing, I loved to send her hats and talk on the phone. She always had a very, very encouraging word to everybody. And one thing she did up to after 100 years old, I always got a birthday card. I don't know about y'all, but I did. <laughs> and one of the things we have always enjoyed through the years was praising God and singing. And whenever I would come down, I would sing with her. On the telephone, we would sing. In fact, when she started going down, um, about the last three weeks of her life, I was talking to Peggy, and she said, well, Marcia, she's not going to recognize or know who you are now, and she's not going to look the same. But God, <laughs> but God, I got on and with my crazy voice and my everything and we start singing and praising God and going on and Peggy asked her she said mama who is that she said that's Marsha Nixon <laughs> tell me God won't do it <laughs> and not only that God had my aunt on a mission this last year some of you know how much she traveled she was she released Rowena to take her to California to see her baby sister who's 10 years younger. Then she released her to go here, there, and then they went to um, Houston. And I'm ready to get through on this last one. She was able to go to Houston to a shower. And when she was at the shower, my sister Gail, Minister Gail, asked her to give us some words of wisdom to these young ladies. And when my aunt got started, and got through, it wasn't a dry eye. So God was getting her ready, and so when that time came, it wasn't no rest in peace, she was rejoicing in peace, because my aunt made it. She often said, I made it, I made it, I made it. Thank you, Jesus, and let's make it with her. Amen. Praise the Lord truly a soldier. She said it's not a soldier, she's a general. Right, we I'm honor good. her. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. He blessed us. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Ah, we thank you because you have been good to all of us. 
So next we have a selection by Kim Murphy, and after that we have the eulogy by our senior pastor, Pastor Clyde L. White. Just before Kim come, I want to share a little bit about Mother Knox, just a little. I would take my grandchildren over to see Mother Knox because we lost our mom probably a year and a half, and so we cling to her, and I take my two grandbabies over there, and little Meglin here, she became very fond of Mother Knox, and Mother Knox and Meglin had their own relationship. And the day that Mother Knox was leaving, Meglin is insightful. She said, you need to take me by. I heard the Holy Spirit said, don't, you, don't take her. And I said, oh, Meglin will go later. And then we come back through, and Meglin said, you promised to take me by. And the Holy Spirit said, no. And then I get the call from Pastor Rowena and said, Mom, scat up out of here. I didn't know how I was going to tell Meglin, but we, like she said, we eased it in with her. Meglin, just remember the things that and the love that she showed you. You hold on to that. This is for each of us that we hold on to the love that she showed us. Don't forget what, what it was a conversation or what. Just hold on to that. That keeps her alive within each of us. But, but let, let me tell you what she said, said to my little grandson. grandson. He, he, he's kind of mouthy, y'all. And, and she looked at him. He didn't say anything, but she looked at him and she said, if you don't listen to your granny, you're going to get in T-R-O-U-B-L-E. And he said, she knows how to spell. I said, <laughs> so what I, I said that to say this. Let's remember the teachings because if we fail to forget, we're going to be in T-R-O-U-B-L-E. I relinquish my stance. Oh, Sister Kim, bless us with the... Bless us, girl, bless us. Amen. Amen. God bless each and every one of you on today. Amen. To my dad, the bishop, to my pastor, and all the ministers, I'm just glad to be here. How many of you know it's the grace of God that we are here today? And it's the grace that allowed Mother Knox to live 104 years. I thank God for his amazing grace, love and comfort to the family. I love you, Pastor Cheatham. I love you, Sister Peggy. And I'm just going to sing this song to God be the glory. Amen.
lift my eyes to Calvary to view the cross where Jesus died for me. How marvelous! How marvelous! How marvelous! How marvelous! All oh, the grace that caught my fallen soul. How marvelous! That's a place, place to praise God, God right there. there. Come on, look at your neighbor and tell him he looked beyond my faults. And he saw my knees. Oh! Somebody said this was a celebration. Come on, when a soldier dies in Christ, we got something to give God glory for. Yeah, yeah, yes. Tell your neighbor, he looked beyond my faults. And he saw my knees. And the season saints used to say, whatever you need, Hallelujah. All right, now don't start that. Y'all know Mother Knox was a praiser. Mother Knox believed in giving God the glory. Mother Knox believed in letting go and letting God have his way. Come on, I know we got to be formal, but sometimes you ought to let loose when Jesus comes in the room. I feel, I feel glory in here. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Come on, clap those sanctified hands and give the Lord a praise, Sister Kim. You bless my soul. Come on, how many of you know his grace is amazing? Hallelujah. I praise the Lord and I honor him today. Hallelujah. Come on, clap those hands and give the Lord a praise in this house. You can be seated in the presence of God. I am so excited about this opportunity. Well, Be seated, be seated if you can, be seated if you can. My, 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 amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Anybody thank God for saving them today? Hallelujah. We honor the Lord and we are excited about, amen, what God is doing even in this season and in this hour. We are celebrating the life of Mother, Mother Elizabeth Knox. Come on, can, can we, we give God, God praise, praise for her life, her legacy? 
Man, we certainly do want to say God bless you to her children today. Come on. Amen. Our very own Pastor Rowena Cheatham. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. Sister Cheryl, come on. Let's give God praise for her. Amen. And certainly Sister Peggy, come on. Let's bless God for her. Amen. And certainly to the grandchildren, amen, this beautiful family. Come on, let's give God praise for this family. I know there's nothing easy about an opportunity like this. It blessed me even to hear, amen, the remarks and expressions. Uh, Sister Fennell start talking about those name brand items. Hallelujah. She didn't grow up on no Equate. Uh, y'all, like, anybody know about the Equate brand? Amen. You know, that's Walmart special. Only Walmart got that. Hallelujah, but I'm so grateful just to hear, amen, the voice and the comments and the remarks of all of our family. Certainly we do honor the pulpit on today. Can we give God praise for the founder of Word of Life Church, amen, the Honorable Bishop G. Glenn Murphy. God bless you, man of God, amen, and certainly to all of the pulpiteers, these men and women of God, to uh, the mistress of ceremony, Pastor Joyce, God bless you to the choir on today. God bless you. Amen. Blessed us today to our musicians, to all of God's children who are present with us. It was a joy to pastor Mother Knox. Amen. On behalf of myself and my beautiful first lady, amen. She's in the back remaining low key, amen, but I am so grateful for her. It was a joy as we were looking over the program, uh, just looking back at some pictures and kind of reflecting First lady pointed out to me in the even the obituary picture. Uh, she said, "Look at look at look at Mother Knox, Amen." And uh, once I looked at that picture, Amen. She had a little swag about her. Hallelujah, Amen. And even up until 104 years old, she was sharp as a tack every Sunday. Amen. Came in with a hat on. She had some thread, y'all. Amen. And I'm so grateful for her life because she was an inspiration to many. Amen. And so I've been praying this entire week as I knew this would be my assignment for today. Amen. Of how I could commemorate her and honor her life and her legacy the right way. Uh, church, I hope you're praying for me on today. This is no easy task. Amen. Especially from the perspective of a senior pastor. Amen. Because not only have you lost a family member, amen, but we've also lost a member of the church, amen, our sainted Mother Knox. So please pray with me as I prepare, amen, to eulogize this woman of God the right way. I want to drive your attention to 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, beginning at verse number 53. We'll stand for the reading of God's word, and I promise you I will leave you alone. Hallelujah. Like I said, as we get older now, I'm 42 or going on 42 in February, and I always uh, used to wonder, amen, why some of the seasoned saints, hallelujah, especially the women of God, didn't like to stand a long time. Amen. Because, see, once you start getting up above 40, these five and six inch heels is a little tough. Amen. On the feet. So I promise you, women of God, amen, I'm going to give you rest in just a minute. But I believe somebody might got their flats on today. Hallelujah. Amen. First Corinthians chapter number 15, beginning at verse number 53. Amen. The word of the Lord there, according to the King James Version of the Bible, it states in 53, for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that it is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Verse 56, the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be unto God, which giveth us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Last verse, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, incorruptible. 
But let, let us pray. pray. Father, now speak through these lips of clay, the unsearchable riches of Christ. I pray for the Knox family in the name of Jesus. I pray for her legacy. I pray for the mantle that has fallen, that it would be picked up by her daughters and carried on in the name of Jesus. I pray that you would touch the grandchildren, touch those living siblings, everyone who was touched by the life of Mother Knox and the life that she lived. Thank you for a firm foundation in which she was able to pass on to her children. Children and all those who were a part of them. I thank you because longevity is in their bloodline. I speak against sickness in the name of Jesus right now. I speak to your body, woman of God and man of God, and I speak to you, Leo, in the mighty name of Jesus. Keep going. Keep your head up. The best is truly yet to come. No weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, you're going to have the power to condemn it. Father, we give you praise. Praise from whom all blessings flow. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Somebody with a glad heart say amen. You can be seated in the presence of God. Mother Knox was 104 years old. And I want to tell you, family, that with that type of life and longevity, you have nothing to hang your head about. Is there anybody that can just give God praise for such longevity being given to this woman of God. It was brought to my attention that her mother also was 102 years old. So that tells us that longevity is in your bloodline. I want to speak to the family to encourage you not only today, but to also empower you. Although this is a phenomenon with her age, however, it does not make it hurt any less. And I know you're going through it. I know your heart is troubled. I know that things are on your mind. And you're running back through all of the memories and the good times and the things that you saw her do running at 76 years old, being able to have a race with your grandmother. I know that it hurts today, but however, one thing that would be even tougher on an occasion like this is that if this was a family that did not have a spiritual foundation, because you're left wondering in a season of loss like this on what to do next, but that's not the testimony of this family today because Mother Knox stood on the charge that she had been given by God. So we don't have to wonder what to do next family because like Revelations 3 and 2 says it is clear to those who still have work to do strengthen the things that remain for your deeds are not yet completed in God. Touch a neighbor and tell them we got work to do. Come on tell them you got to keep going. I know she's no longer with us but Mother Knox will want us to carry on the bloodstained banner of the Lord. Tell somebody I've got work to do. So we got to strengthen those things that remain. An opportunity like this cannot be spent just comforting you because this is also an opportunity to lay a charge. So I cannot just sit here and comfort you as a senior pastor without also laying a charge to you. In the same way I encourage you, I also must empower you. A charge is a duty and a responsibility that must be obeyed. Just as Mother Knox was 104 years old, she was an example to all of us that your faithfulness in God will bring about vitality. Well, what is vitality, man of God? Vitality is the state of being strong and active. It is the state of being energetic. One thing that I can tell you as her pastor all the way up until 104, she was yet strong and active active in the house of God. There was not a Sunday that we looked out there that we didn't see her beautiful face. In fact, sometimes she beat her own daughters getting up to get ready to go to church. And when she walked inside the house of God, if you would reach out to shake her hand, she had a grip that was out of this world. Because vitality means to have strength. And not only did she have a grip out of this world, but she had a word for everybody. And when you would talk to her, you could hear in her voice the strength she had, the voice of a lion. Uh -huh. At 104 years old, there was nothing feeble about her because she is proof that if you keep your faith centered in God, he will keep you active even in your season age. So even at 104 years old, there may be some things that she would forget, but there was never a time that she did not know who God is. 
She may couldn't remember everybody's name. She may couldn't remember everything she wanted to say. But if you ever brought up the conversation of who God is, she had a conversation for you. Notice I didn't say she didn't know who God was. I said she always knew who God is. And the reason she didn't know who God was, uh-huh, and she understood who God is, is because there is never a time that God ceases to be. So he's never in a was tense. He always is. For those who come to him must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Take a neighbor, do you know who God is? I'm here to let you know that although Mother Knox is no longer with her, God yet is. I want you to understand that even though you're hurting and you're going through pain, God yet is. God is my all and my all. So she always knew who God is because even in her pain, he yet is. Hebrews 11 and 6 tells us, but without faith it is impossible to please him for those who come to him must believe that he is. I need for you to understand because God is, we're going to get through this. And because God is, we are going to be able to smile again. Because God is, we will be able to go on. She was more than just a woman. She was a matriarch, all right? A matriarch is a woman who is the head of her family. And when you have the responsibility of being the head, you have to gather. It is one of the assignments of a matriarch to gather and to keep the family together, to make sure that you put out fires of family that's trying to have disputes. Mother was a matriarch. She knew how to get people back on good terms with one another. I want to submit to you, Peggy, Rowena, and Cheryl, that you have to pick up exactly where she left off. It is the job of a matriarch to gather. It is your assignment to keep the family close. Beginning with yourselves, don't let anything come between you. Because when you have the anointing and the mantle of a matriarch, you have to keep things together. See, mantles never enter into heaven. They always fall back down to earth. Because heaven is a place that has no need of a mantle because everything is perfect where God is. So the mantle is not for heaven. The mantle is for you and I. And because we have work to do, you have to carry on the legacy that your mother left. Because at that moment when you put on incorruption, death is swallowed up. When Elijah was being lifted up into heaven, Elijah witnessed him go up. But watch this. His mantle fell down. So I charge you in the presence of this family that you gird yourself with the same incorruption that mother had. Because the thing that's so important about incorruption is that the moment that you put on incorruption, it is at that moment the word says that death is defeated. That's why you ain't got to wait till the battle is over. You can go ahead and shout now. Do I got anybody out there that's given their life to Christ? Well, guess what? We ain't got to wait till we get to glory to give God the praise for being eternal. Because at the moment when you give your life to Christ is when you already become incorruptible. Tell your neighbor, because I'm incorruptible, I can go through some things and come out on top. Because I'm incorruptible, I can deal with some situations. Because I'm incorruptible, I can go through a thing, take a licking, and keep on ticking. The mother that lays here right now was truly incorruptible. Let me show you just how incorruptible her life was at 104, because some of you don't realize just how how much she survived and lived through 404 years old. She had a centennial anointing. Good God, I wish I could park right there. Take a neighbor, she had a centennial anointing. Come on, she's a bad mama jam. Just as foxy as she can be. Come on, some of y'all ain't been in church your whole life. If you don't know this text, I bet you know that song. I, I dated a nudge your neighbor and say she was a bad mama jam. Come on, she had an centennial anointing. She was a centenarian. Over the past hundred years, some of the most profound events in human history have occurred, including societal and political change, war and discoveries. Can I tell you just how much this woman of God lived through? Can I tell you just how much this woman of God survived? Here it is. In 1920, the women's suffrage happened, which gave women a voice because God knew she had had to find her voice. In 1923, the great Canto earthquake happened, killing 140,000 people, but her faith 
was unshakable. In 1926, the U.S. started numbering the highway systems because God wanted her to have direction. In 1929, Wall Street crashed, but her treasures were not in earthen vessels. In 1934, Adolf Hitler consolidated power, but she dodged Hitler's hit list. In 1937, the Great Depression went as an all-time high, but the joy of the Lord was still her strength. Oh God, I feel like preaching. Mm -hmm. In 1937, uh-huh. In 1945, World War II ended, but she was still fighting the good fight of faith. In 1955, Rosa Parks stayed seated on a bus to encourage mother to stay seated with Christ. In 1963, JFK was assassinated, but the enemy could not kill her determination. In 1965, civil rights turned violent in Selma, Alabama, but God had a hedge of protection around Mother Knox. In 1968, Dr. Martin Luther King was assassinated, but she lived to see his dream manifested. In 1977, the first computers began to be available, but her intel came from the Word of God. In 1981, AIDS impacted America, but a thousand may fall at a side, 10,000 on her right hand, but it did not come in IV. Is there anybody that can celebrate an incorruptible woman? In 1995, the bombing of Oklahoma happened, but no weapon formed against her shall be able to prosper because God had a hedge of protection around her life. In 1996, the dawn of cloning people became a thing, but she yet remained an original. Take a neighbor, there was nobody like her. In 2001, though the 9-11 Twin Towers fell, she was still standing on the word of God. In 2005, Hurricane Katrina hit New Orleans. But even though the storm may rise and the billows may roll, at breakers may dash, but she didn't sway because he held her fast. In 2009, the first black president was elected. She saw her prayers manifested. In 2020, the world's most fearsome pandemic with COVID-19 happened, but she had the victory over the virus. In fact, she took care of her kids while stuff was killing everybody else. Give your neighbor a high five and tell them she was truly incorruptible. And so that's why the word says in 1 Corinthians 15, but thanks be unto God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, your labor is not in vain. Her labor was not in vain. Now I need to ask the devil. Verse 55 says, O death, where is your sting? O grave, where is your victory? To be absent from the body is to be present from the Lord. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Somebody point at the casket and say absent, present. Absent, present. Absent, present. Incorruptible. Go ahead on and praise him. Because this too shall pass. She went through some things, but she never lost her faith. Her faith in God. After you suffered a while, patience, he'll settle you. He'll establish you. Now, I know you may be hurting, but we got to take just a moment and give God praise. Because she was truly incorruptible. Her faith was not shaken. She lived through wars, survived through racism, went through segregation, and still came out giving God glory. Shout yes!
praise God for incorruption. Come on, you're going through something. But if your faith is in God, you will not be bothered. You will not be moved.
shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the sea, midst of the sea, Though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, 
there is a river whose streams shall make glad in the city of God, the holy place of tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. The nations raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord, who has made desolation in the earth. He make war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariots in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought, brought forth, O oh, ever, you had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting. You are God. The days of our lives are 70 years. And if it be by reason of strength, they are 80 years. Yet their boast is only labor and sorrow, for soon it is cut off and we fly away.
because of the bad weather, we're going to have the committal service right here in the sanctuary. We're going to have the graveside service right here in the sanctuary. Mother Elizabeth Knox. What a wonderful woman she was. Yes. Let's give her a hand clap, the last hand clap. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise God for Mother Elizabeth Knox. I used to love to hear her say, me and Jesus got our own thing going on. <laughs> she had her own thing going on with Jesus right here on earth, but now she's got her own thing going on with Jesus right there sitting at his feet with the, with the God that she loved. She loved her some Jesus. She was a great example of faithfulness to God. She fought the good fight of faith, and she finished her course at 104 years old. Mother Elizabeth Knox, what a great and wonderful woman she was. She be loved by all, and she be missed by many. Mother Elizabeth Knox, what a wonderful, wonderful woman she was. At this, this time, we'll do the committal service. Behold, I so show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. We shall be changed in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corrupt shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall we brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not 